Most people, when they get foot in trap, are generally close to shore or close to an obstacle where the water is not overly deep. We typically look at the idea of waist to chest deep as the most likely areas for someone to get foot entrapped. When that happens, we're going to use the three assessments for foot entrapment to try and figure out what form of rescue is going to be best. First of all, we need to establish both upstream and downstream safety. Upstream safety so that no one else comes down and potentially becomes a hazard to either the rescuers or our subjects and downstream safety because while we're trying to perform the rescue, there's a possibility that one of our rescuers could get swept downstream or that the subject himself will, will get their foot free. They'll start getting washed downstream. We'll need to rescue them. The first of our three assessments is to assess what type of foot entrapment we're gonna be dealing with. Does our subject have their head up with an open airway or is their face in the water, head down without an airway? We'll then be able to decide that if they have an open airway, what our subject needs is stabilization. In the event that they don't have an airway, what our subject needs is immediate extrication. Sometimes we'll find subjects face down in the water. If they're face down in the water, they may still in fact have a small airway with a pocket of air as water starts pillowing up over top of them. With these subjects, one of the things that we may try to do is tap them with a rope or hit them with a rope so that they can reach up and grab onto something to provide better stabilization. We have other subjects that we may find who are completely submerged and face down in the water with no airway. Those subjects require immediate extrication. If we just provide those subjects with an airway, they're not necessarily gonna spontaneously start breathing. So it's better for us to get them out of the river, out of that environment, and into a spot where we can actually start providing proper resuscitation efforts. To stabilize them, we're going to move into our second assessment. And our second assessment is in relation to direct contact. Can we make direct contact with our subject? Being able to make direct contact with a foot and trap subject is really the best way to rescue them. In the event that we can't make direct contact with our subject, the likelihood of their survivability goes way down. It's paramount that we work on our skills to be able to access people to the best of our abilities. We can only make direct contact if it's within our acceptable level of risk. So, as we look around and assess the area, we need to think of what happens if I then start having to swim and moving downstream. The third assessment is gonna be our environment, our banks. And that in the event that our banks are within 20 meters or 60 feet of each other, or the length of one throw rope, then we can start looking at two bank techniques versus the idea of one bank technique. As we assess our working zone, if we have a working zone which is no greater than 20 meters or the length of one throw bag, we can potentially provide some type of rope assisted stabilization using both banks. In the event that our, we're in an environment where our banks or working zones are more than 20 meters apart, more than 60 feet, more than one throw bag length, now what we're gonna look at is to see whether we can have access from one bank. Dealing with any type of foot entrapment requires some type of plan, skill, and training that we're thinking or anticipating what we would do in any given situation before the incident actually happens. To try and make up these techniques on the scene without practicing them, without thinking about them, generally ends up using up a lot of time. Become excellent at swift water rescue, we want to ensure that we, one, have a high level of expertise, that secondly, we're able to work efficiently, and thirdly, that we're expedient or quick with our skills. Remember, set upstream and downstream safety to contain rescuers. Assessment one, does the victim have an open airway? If yes, stabilize. If no, immediate extrication. Assessment number two, can direct contact be made? Direct contact is always the best option when safe to do so. Assessment number three, what is the working environment for the rescue? Can the rescue be done from one bank, two banks, or no banks at all? Advanced foot entrapment rescue skills will be reviewed in the next episode. And remember, we recommend taking a rescue course with a certified rescue professional.